Hi everyone, E-Tech Tom here. Welcome to my channel, making some music with the Arduino. In this experiment, actually playing some notes with the Arduino, as opposed to just using that piezo, turning it on and off with that annoying sound. So this experiment actually comes from Jeremy Blum's book, Exploring Arduino. It's a good introduction to Arduino. I like it. I think it's like chapter 5. Sort of reminds me of the level of sound you get from playing some vintage video games. As far as the circuit goes, it's just a simple series circuit. I have a 150 ohm current limiting resistor connected to a 10k potentiometer, which uh, only using two leads, so we can vary the resistance from 10k to zero and from there it gets connected to a uh, 8 ohm speaker that is breadboard mountable just has these two rigid connectors on it so you can plug it right into the breadboard goes through the speaker and the other side is connected to ground so the circuit's pretty straightforward. We're connected to pin 9 on the Arduino. And then there's a 150 ohm resistor. And then there's a 10K potentiometer with just the two leads. This is the wiper arm. So this can vary between 10K and 0. So when this is zero we have the 150 and then here we have the 8 ohm speaker right here to ground the maximum current we can draw from the Arduino is 40 milliamps so that'll give us the uh, highest volume so if we have 5 volts, there's 5 volts here on pin 9, if we have 5 volts divided by 40 milliamps, that equals, let's see here, we have 5 divided by 40 times 10 to the minus 3 is 40 milliamps equals to 125 ohms. So if we had a total of 125 ohms, that would be the maximum current we would be drawing 40 milliamps. So this is 8 ohm speaker. So if we adjust the potentiometer so it's completely taken out of the circuit, so it's up to here, so it's zero, we can have a total of um, 125. If we take into account the 8 ohms, we have 125 minus 8 is equal to 117 ohm resistor. Well, that's not a standard value. 150 ohms is a standard value and it's not that much higher than 117. So we'll draw a little less than the 40 milliamps, which is probably a good thing. Uh, I mean, we can get 40 milliamps, but might as well not completely max out at 40. So that's why we have the 150. That's a, that's a standard value. So let's take a look at the sketch that's producing this sound. This small program actually uses a number of interesting techniques. Uh, here we have include where in the past uh, we use that to pull in libraries from outside uh, to get access to their resources. And here we're using include, we've created, or we're going to create uh, pitches.h, which is, which is going to be a list of constants which are going to have all the notes and their associated frequencies. So if you think about it, you know, there are frequencies and then in order for us to um, interpret or be able to communicate those frequencies, we've actually defined, and defined them in, in terms of musical notes. So, you know, instead of just having a list of frequencies, we're going to create these, these lists of constants that... Uh, will have a, a frequency associated with each one of its names. 
and then we will call those names to get uh, each one of those frequencies. And when you play uh, songs, you have the note, and then you also have uh, the duration of the note. You have pitches also, uh, but with each note, there's also the note, the frequency, and uh, a duration, how long it's going to play. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up two arrays, and one array will be the notes. This is the note array, and then the second array is going to be the time that each note is played. And each array must equal uh, as far as the elements go. So there's going to be 20 elements to this array, 20 notes, and there is going to be 20 separate uh, durations for each note in this array that has as its elements all the durations. So let's take a look at this header file with all the pitch definitions. So here's the file that gets created that has a list of constants. It has all the frequencies and each frequency is going to be assigned a name. So we just call these names up, these constants, and each one of these constants will have this one of these frequencies associated with it. So here we have D1, this is 37 Hertz, so these are all in Hertz. Uh, that's the D note and 1 is the first octave. Uh, we have F sharp first octave 46 Hertz. So we have a long list of notes or a long list of frequencies that we've assigned constant names to each one. And that gets stored in a separate file. That's pitch.h. So the advantage of having all those frequencies uh, assigned to constants in a separate file is that you're not taking up the memory on the Arduino. So that gets called when this program gets compiled. All those frequencies get, uh, all those constants get called. So we have include pitches.h, which is the name of the file that has all these frequencies. And here we declare another constant, an interconstant speaker, which is going to be pin 9. That's going to be the output on the Arduino, pin 9. And here we set up our first array. So this is the note array. And it's an integer. And you can put 20 in these brackets here to uh, denote that you're going to have 20 elements. So you just leave it blank. And uh, it'll know you have 20 elements because you're going to uh, list the 20 elements in, in this array. And with each note array you have to have a duration. You have to know how long you're going to play that note. So we have a duration array which also has 20 elements. And these are the durations in milliseconds. And each one of these corresponds to the note element. So in order to play that song, we play each one of these notes one after another in the note array with its corresponding duration. So here we have a for statement. We initialize i equal to zero. And for i less than 20, we increment i. And we have this tone function, which has three arguments. We have the speaker, which uh, this is the uh, defined output, pin 9. We have the note. So i is the element, is the index for that element. And the corresponding time is the duration. So we have the elements, the note elements, and the times element called from each one of these arrays. And we have a delay, we set up a delay here, times i, and the reason we have a delay here is we don't want the next note playing before the previous note has stopped playing. So if you think about it, whatever the duration is of the previous note, you want that 
uh, to finish before you start playing the next note or they'll mix, they'll mix together. And then we just have a do nothing loop here where we have to press reset when we want the sketch to play again. So the advantage to setting up a separate file for all the constants of the notes is that we'd have to include that in this main sketch here and that would just take up uh, a lot of a lot more memory in the Arduino. This way here we use the include to uh, bring in the constants of all the notes when this sketch is compiled. So that's how you can program the Arduino to play musical notes and you just put those notes together to make any tune that you'd like to play on the Arduino. One final note here, no pun intended, uh, all of a sudden I was getting out of sync errors and I couldn't figure out what was going on and I made the assumption that all things had stayed the same except for me wiring the Arduino circuits so I thought I blew something up uh, but what I found was that if you go in here on the IDE you have a wide selection of different Arduino boards that can be used well I, th I don't even recall but I must have been going in here and just looking at what was available in the IDE and I had somehow I think I selected like the, uh, a different board. I know I selected a different board. And you'll get an out of sync errors on the bottom uh, when you go to verify the program or upload. You'll get these out of sync or sync errors uh, on the bottom of the screen. So that's something that you might want to look into if you ever come across this problem. Make sure you're, you have the right board selected in the IDE. So that's it for this experiment, making music with the Arduino. I hope you found this experiment interesting. Feel free to like, subscribe, and or comment. And thanks for watching.